Hello community! New diffusion models have been published in the last day and therefore let's have a look at this new technology that we can apply now to our text to image generators. Now you will see that we need here to understand here the physics of diffusion to go beyond today's technology and make the next scientific leap forward. So here we are, diffusion, you know this. In computer science, we have a simple two-way process. We have a process of a forward diffusion going here from our original image here into a high-dimensional mathematical space, and then the backward diffusion process that leads us back to generate here a synthetic image with our generator. Now, of course, you know that here, what I called here mathematical interesting space is here that we add in small stochastic steps noise, noise distribution in a particular mathematical way. And then the transformer or whatever you use learns here to reconstruct from the noise here, then an either the original image or a new image with unseen objects. So this here is the forward and backward diffusion process. Now, you know that we gradually add noise here in a Markov process. This is important here for the mathematical operational tasks. And an AI system, like a UNAT in the classical way, or now with diffusion transformer, simply learns this process step by step of the stochastic process. Now, if I say, for example, a noise sample drawn from a particular distribution specifically here in the context of adding noise to an image and a diffusion process, I received some questions about this. How is this done exactly? Here you have an explanation for my green grasshoppers, where I show you how to generate noise samples, how to do the application to image pixel, and find the vectorized representation for you to read in detail here. It is very simple as you see how you add here this noise distribution data and what it really means when we say we ate, we add here a specific noise value that was drawn here from, for example, a normal distribution about the variance that is important. And so you understand we have rather simple two-step process in our diffusion models. Now, it is interesting that we take here small steps. So we gradually have here a stochastic noising process. And this is important simply for the transformer here to learn complex data distribution in a high dimensional mathematical space. However, the high dimensionality of this mathematical space has some inherent problems I'm going to talk to later. Reversibility is really important. And we do this here that each step of the diffusion process is simply designed to be reversible, meaning our AI model can learn to undo the noise addition. So starting from a slightly noised image and progressively increasing the noise allows the model to learn a sequence of reverse steps to reconstruct the original image from noise. And if you have then a trained transformer system like you have in the language models, you can then simply have the text to image generators that build your image of unseen objects. As easy as this is. So, stepwise nature of the diffusion process is important here. What the AI model learns at the different stages when we add here the noise in a particular way. And the benefit of this is we have a high quality generation of real complex images that we can generate simply with a text to image generator. So you ask another two questions about the encoding information. So we add here in the forward diffusion process the noise in a very controlled and a very specific mathematical way. And we gradually increase here the noise level. And in each step, the process ensures that a fraction of the original image information is retained, even as the image becomes increasingly noisy. So we have a controlled mathematical process, and this is important for the learning of the system and the reversibility so that our text-to-image generator can rebuild here a new image. And therefore, it is not a pure random noise. 
The noise at the end of the forward diffusion process is not purely absolutely random in the sense of being entirely uncorrelated with the original image. Instead, it's highly complex yet as structured in a high dimensionality mathematical space, a representation that retains some information about the original image pixel values in a form, of course, that's not immediately perceptible or that we as humans can see if you look at these noise images. Okay, Markov, if you're not familiar with this, is a Markov chain where each step is independent or dependent only on the previous stage and not on the sequence that preceded it. So it's independent what happened here n plus one steps before it. Beautiful. So in conclusion, while the image at the end of the forward diffusion process may look like pure noise, if you as a human look at this, it is not completely random, but it contains here a very controlled, after some finite stochastic steps of adding noise values from a particular, let's say, Gaussian distribution to the original image pixel data. It is a sophisticated encoding, but it enables the model to learn exactly those steps. If you want to understand the historic evaluation and how it came into being, I have here an own playlist here on my YouTube channel where I talk about stable diffusion. And as you can see, it goes back more than a year. And there you have all the interesting things that happened in a historical context to where we are today. But we want to look here at current new technologies. So, as you know now, transformers are used to model the sequence of denoising steps, learning to predict the noise that was added at each forward step of the diffusion process, and thus learn how to reverse it. Just a short summarization. So we have more or less three important elements to watch out for. At first, we have the training phase. And during this, the diffusion models, and I would say you go with a transform architecture, are exposed simply to pairs of original and noise corrupted images at various stages of the diffusion process. To put it really in a simply, maybe oversimplified way, but I just want to give you the feeling for this. And this now trains the model to understand how noise is incrementally added to the image across multiple stochastic steps. And this is exactly what we also have here. The system just learns like when you add words to it. And then gradient descent, this is our learning paradigm if you want. Then our AI model, our transformer model, uses gradient descent that you know from our LLM systems to minimize the difference between its prediction of the system and the actual noise that was added at each step. And this teaches here our AI model the precise sequence of noise removal steps necessary to reconstruct the original image from noise. So it is the classical transformer learning process. Now, interesting now, the mathematically space that we built the noise into is critical. We call it the Latin space and it has a high dimensionality, but this is also the crux of this. So the transformer's capacity to model the denoising process is linked to the dimensionality of its latent space. And a higher dimensional latent space allows for a more detailed representation of the denoising path, enabling the transformer architecture to capture and replicate more complex visual patterns and more complex visual structures inherent in the image data. However, there is also a problem on a computational level and on a different level I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Beautiful. Now that we know this, we are now look here at the latest publication, March 5th, 2024. Here, Stability AI. They show us here their new transformer architecture here for Stable Diffusion 3. And as you see, immediately we are talking now about rectified flow in our transformer architecture for high-resolution image synthesis. Beautiful. So what is happening now is an interesting path because they talk about conceptual simplicity with their new element, which they call a rectified flow. 
So let's have a little bit of a deep dive and understand what is going on and why this company is using this particular new technological development to use this here in Stable Diffusion 3. Put it mildly, we have a transformer-based architecture for a text-to-image generation that uses here now separate weight structure tensors here for the two modalities of text and image. And we have now an, a bridge, an interconnect, which enables a bi-directional flow of information between the image token and the text tokens. Improving now here, human preference rating, text comprehension, and the performance of the system. Let's have a look at the schematic architecture. Now, interestingly, if you look now here, let's go here. Yeah, they call it, by the way, the multimodal. You have text and image diffusion transformer, MMDIT. Okay. As I told you, separate set of tensor weights for the image and for the language representation. And you have here, let's have a look at this. We have three different text embedders. We have two clip models here and a T5 model to encode here our text representation. So three text embedder. Of course, you have to learn this. You have to train this. This is quite an intense process. But then you simply have here this text embedding where you have a joint attention calculation and an image embedding flow or a stream, if you want, where you see here with the joint attention mechanism that you know, that you are familiar from, the normal self-attention transformers, you can hear this interflux of information, this exchange of information between text and image processes. Having two independent transformer for each modality, text and image, but joining the sequences of the two modalities for the attention operation as the authors of this publication call it officially. Now, if you want to have here a look at this block in more detail with the mathematical operation happening, here it is. But the rectified flow formulation is not really visible in this because it is more of a theoretical concept that we need to understand. Just rectified flow formulation where data and noise are connected on a linear trajectory during the training. And now you know here the important word is linear, but you might ask, what is a trajectory here if we are inside a diffusion transform architecture? However, I'm going to explain it in a second. This results, as the author write, in a straighter inference path, which then allows sampling with fewer steps. So you see where we're going. Also, the architecture is now a little bit more intense from the architecture point of view. We have now separate transformer axis. We have here just one interlink and we try to connect it here in a linear fashion. So this indicates here a further simplification of the model. Now, the first moment that we discovered rectified flow here was a publication in September 2022, so quite a while ago here from University of Texas at Austin. And they present the rectified flow and they call it a surprisingly simple example of learning here ordinary differential equation models to transport between two empirical observed distribution, pi zero and pi one. So the idea of the rectified flow is to learn the ordinary differential equation to follow the straight path connecting the points drawn from the from two different distribution as much as possible. And the goal here was to have a computationally efficient AI models, so to make it easier for computation. Of course, February 2023, there's an interesting paper about flow matching. Here we are now here focusing on the optimal transport displacement interpolation to define the conditional probability path of the system. Have a look at this, I would recommend in detail. But if you just want to know the content is here, it's very simple. 
they are modeling here complex probability distribution and then they say this flow matching this is a new method for training here and we have regressive vector fields to mix to match here fixed conditional probability path between the noise and the data samples our distribution the classical models are computational expensive and rather slow and you get it this new approach here is much faster for training and you might ask why and you see the explanation here in the images the normal trajectory here that are a, a rather complex mathematical representation are now simplified to a straight line trajectory as opposed to the curve path of the real diffusion process so we do simplifications and we say okay we know the end point we know the start point and what is the simplest geometric you get the idea now, interestingly, you can even go higher on the, on the level if you want here with building normalizing flows here with some stochastic interpolants. I have talked about this myself in my two videos where I talked about how can we update the old technology of SORA with new technological components. And I was talking about stochastic interpolants in this particular way. And also when I talked about here Genie and I explained to you the architecture of Genie for, if you want, text to video game generators. Okay. Now let me give you a simple visual example. Now if we have now this new Stable Diffusion 3 and you have here an image from the original publication and this is here the prompt that the authors told us with this prompt, this image was generated. Now, I was just interested, how would this compare with our classical GPT-4 model? And here you have it, I took the exact prompt, and here this is if I use here my GPT-4 Turbo system to generate a text to image. I would say, yeah, of course, if you look here at the details, beautiful. So, you might think now, okay, so I have here a lot of simplifications. Let's look at this a little bit more specific. What is happening here in this model? Because we need to understand when to apply this model to our tasks. So, as I told you in the traditional diffusion models, we have clearly a mathematical stochastic process. Changes are made in small discrete steps and there's a bit of randomness involved at each step. It's akin to adding dots to a picture without a clear path where each dot is placed on a roll of dice. Beautiful. Now, to make this system simpler to handle, simpler to calculate, faster to calculate, you can go now from a stochastic process to a continuous process. And you know, in mathematics, the simplest way to do this is with ordinary differential equation. Now we are switching in a kind of simplification to a continuous process. So instead of hopping from point to point, we are now drawing smooth continuous lines. So we have here a clear geometric object that is really mathematically easy to calculate. And side of mathematical constitution that guide the lines. Yes, yes, yes. So you get the idea. Now you notice that adding noise here in the stochastic process we had here this randomness which was a key feature but now here with the continuous trajectory we have now that the even the reverse process is smooth over the time development and this leads to a better computational efficiency and a better mathematical predictability if we apply those simplifications. And you might ask, why do we do this? Why do we have here the system that evolves and we reduce the complexity for simplification and simplification, simplification? So, I mean, what it does is, of course, it helps here. We have now a continuous and a smooth path for gradually reducing the noise, leading here either to the original or to new coherent images of unseen objects. But this is in a stark contrast to traditional methods that might require iterating through many discrete steps with potential inefficiencies and less predictability in how each step affects the overall image quality. So you see, we want to smoothen things out. 
But you know, there's a critical point. Does the structure of the data and the structure of the mathematical space that we build, is this a smooth space to operate in? Or does it have instabilities? Flow. The idea of flow is rather simple. Flow refers to a method of transforming data between two stages. And you can have either from a complex data distribution to a simpler data distribution, like a Gaussian distribution or a noise distribution, that is important, reversible. So flow here, again, transformation, flow transformation, what we call it. The forward process, particular when described with ordinary differential equation, involves model modeling how data can be transformed into noise in a continuous manner. And ODAs provide here the mathematical framework for describing then also the reverse process smoothly over time without our discrete step-by-step -step approach here that we use in the original stochastic pure correct mathematical methods. We have now differential equations that are very easy to solve here with our differential solver packages that we have in Python or in C++. So, if you think about it, we have three steps of simplification that are happening now in the latest models like Stable Diffusion 3. So within now the Diffusion Transformer framework, flows here facilitate the reversible and information-preserving transformation between the complex visual data of the image and simple noise distribution of it enhancing here the generative capabilities of the model. This is what we call a flow transformation. And then we use here our ordinary differential equation to simplify the forward and of course the inverse transformation further. It refines this transformation offering here a continuous, efficient and theoretically grounded, simplified approach to model the generative process. Now, the beauty is that our uh, differential equation can describe the empire path now as a continuous flow, smooth, instead of having here to deal with our discreetly steps for each transformation. And then we even go one step further and we go to a rectified flow. And the rectified flow, just to make this clear here, is a specific type of flow in generative model that emphasizing here a straight line path structure or a rectified path in the transformation process. So instead of having here the transformation follow a complex, potentially curved path from the data to the noise distribution, which can be computationally a little bit more complicated, a little bit more time intense, we just go with a straight line. We have the mathematical simplification calculated immediately. So Rectified here implies a correction, or as the authors call it, an improvement towards simplicity and efficiency in how the data distribution and the noise distribution in our high dimensional mathematical space are connected through a set of simplification. Beautiful. And now you might ask why all this optimization through simplification and why not go with the full mathematical complexity? Stability, I put it in a very nice wording, real high up on their priority list. And they say, hey, with a GPU, right, they note here, NVIDIA RTX, so a gaming GPU 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, it takes about half a minute to generate an image with this new system, with this new simplified system, uh, to generate an image of a resolution 1K times 1K. So you see clearly what we are looking here now. They have here the rather stochastic and complex diffusion model. They want to make it simpler. They want to have a further simplification and then go even with another further simplification for a clear reason to fit it here on a classical gaming CPU or TX4090 for the mass market here for profit optimization and to enter here this classical market segment of gamers who have here, for example, an RTX 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. 
you might ask, is this the way forward? Is this the way to go to have all this list set of simplifications in the mathematical process just to bring it down to one GPU? There's some other, and let me let me be a little bit sarcastic now when I say, hey, that global corporations, a very general term, might claim that 90% of their customer just play with this infrastructure of AI. And they just need what they call simple AI. And therefore, those global corporations in their earnings reports, they tell their shareholder, you know what? We can make here our, for example, text to image generator faster, more efficient at the same price with higher profits for the shareholders of our company and for the stakeholder, we can tell them, hey, we have a reduced environmental impact because the system calculates faster, we use less energy, we use less water for cooling here our systems and therefore they call it a win-win situation for the shareholders and their stakeholders. And of course, there's another win because NVIDIA is happy that you now buy an RTX 4090 for the calculation of this brand new Stable Diffusion 3 model. However, if you are not part of this idea that 90% of the customer are, you can use a simplified AI system. And yeah, by the way, in my corner, little corner of the world here and RTX 4090 today costs about 2,200 euro. So if you are now part of the other 10% who want some professional, high performance system, if you are working in visual photography, in visual art, if you are working in marketing, you need visual, convincing, impressive objects, you might go here with a high performance system. And I think here, and this is just my personal idea, Claude GPUs are also a beautiful solution. You do not have to buy here a computer infrastructure that will be out of date within the next month. But why not go here to, let's say, RunPod? Not sponsored. I just personally like their offering. And so you have here Cloud GPU pricing. And here you see today from the secure cloud. So this is the more expensive version if you want to have security attached to it. And yeah, let's have a look. I don't know, an H180 gigabyte NVIDIA data center GPU costs you per hour here on demand about four US dollars per hour. Or if you go with a node, that means eight times the GPU, it costs you about 30 bucks per hour. Or if you go here, I don't know, with a 1490, with 24 gigabytes of RAM plus 24 gigabytes of RAM, it costs you here on the demand, which means available immediately, about 74 cents per hour. So you see, maybe if you take here half a minute for one image, maybe this is also quite a possible solution for yourself. However, if you are not operating here in a secure cloud, but if you are just doing your own images or you're just experiencing here, there's also the version, do you know, from RunPod, a community cloud. Please note it has reduced security. So I don't know what is exactly happening, whatever cloud provider now you connect to. But just to give you an idea about the prices here on H180 gigabyte with uh, 125 gigabyte RAM. We are talking here about an on demand about $3.4 per hour. Or if you go here on the spot, so if you say, hey, let it run overnight, sometimes overnight, and in the morning I want to have a result, you go with about two and a half dollars per hour of this. Or you go down here to an RTX A6000 with 48 gigabytes of VRAM plus 50 gigabytes of RAM, and then you are about, I don't know, 34 cents to 70 cents per hour for this GPU cloud. 
So I think you decide which system you want to apply to, go to, use for. It's all up to you. So here we are now with our diffusion model, with our new diffusion model that include a lot of very intelligent technology applied to it, but understand those are simplifications. Those are to make the system faster, to make it also cheaper to run, not to buy, but just to run. And this simplification are based on the idea that some of the mathematical objects, like let's say here, when we create this noise in a mathematical space, that this mathematical space has some properties. That we have a smooth space to operate on. But imagine if we would find out in real world that this is not the case. That all these simplifications are based on ideas that are not happening in the real backward diffusion process. Then the system gets interesting. And then, and now this is an outlook for my next video, something beautiful is going to happen here with backward diffusion. Yes, you can run your simplified case, but you will see that it will break down at a certain level. Because we missed something very important, or our simplification were based on ideas and assumptions that are not happening in the real world of backward diffusion. So this here is just an outlook to tell you, we will have to look now to go the next step, to develop the next technology for this. We have to understand the system. And we will use some theoretical physics idea, like spin classes here, to apply to exactly the backward diffusion process. And we will notice that uh, symmetry break is going to happen in this. And this is beautiful because it tells us simply something about this process. And if we have a symmetry breaking, yeah, there's something that I want to show you in the next video that will enable us to build better models where we do not need here this uh, beautiful simplification that we apply today in our latest technology. But there is another way forward, being able to understand exactly what is happening and how we can use this symmetry breaking here for our advantage so we can build better diffusion models for the future. It would be great to see you in my next video.